Don't you love it when you nap at 8 p.m. and you wake up at 9 and the first thing you do before you get off the bed, you take out your phone? Because, you know, the people who do not use their phone, you know, before they get up, they are considered as weird people. And the first thing you see when you open the phone while you're still in bed is OJ Simpson dead at 76. And you think to yourself, you have never covered an OJ Simpson video on this channel. And until today, I did not know what OJ Simpson did. I just know his name and the famous uh, picture that they took off the court with him where he had his gloves on. He was like... I didn't do it, but I didn't know what he didn't do. I thought I knew he was famous from before, but I thought he went and he tickled a couple of kids' bellies. And for the ones who are too lazy to search up what happened to OJ, don't worry, I searched it. I am here to make a video uncovered for you. It all started a very long time ago where me and you were in our dad's balls next to our brothers and sisters. While we, were playing, while we were playing the game Russian Roulette. Waiting for the right moment to see if our dad gets any bitches or not. Waiting for our time to shine to see either we'll go inside a tissue or we will go inside a vagina. We were waiting for the golden ticket. OJ Simpson, born in 1940s, obviously raised in a very poor neighborhood because that's how every you know superstar story starts in the end of 60s and you know the whole way through the 70s he broke so many records he was in, like in, in i don't know football high school he broke a record of uh, 14 games 16,000. i don't understand football but he played football and he was really good at it he won a lot of cups he won a lot of uh, things he broke a lot, a lot of records and obviously being the Cristiano Ronaldo of the that century he was offered a lot of advertising a lot of people wanted to work with him he was getting a lot of money a lot of fame in a very fast pace but this is where the juicy stuff in the famous case uh, also known as the greatest trial of all time starts while still OJ being married to his wife Margarita one night he decided to go in 1977 to a private club that is the time where he meets the 18 year old Nicole Brown a nightclub waitress and immediately he was like oh my god she is so hot I want her and obviously men after they get fame and money that is when they are tested if they are loyal or not and many fail because you know you give an opportunity to a man he will take it a wise man once said every hole is a goal and that's what happened once you have the money once you have the opportunities you are going to do it not all of us but most of us now while OJ and Nicole Brown were playing boyfriend girlfriend doing their thing at the same time uh, OJ's wife current wife Marguerite had a child she was pregnant she had a child and after like two three years the child apparently drowned in this in their own swimming pool in their mansion that was the time where the marriage went south obviously losing a child it's a it's a very huge thing it's gonna affect you mentally you know Margaret sitting at home and crying oj simpson i'm assuming he cried in other ways with his 18 19 20 year old uh girlfriend after that the first wife finalized the divorce and that is the time where she nicole brown the 18 19 20 year old she was no longer a girlfriend in 1985 the boyfriend and the girlfriend became official they decided to make things official they got married and after that they had two children as well but little did they know the first wife knew it all along and she performed some black magic so the relationship would go to shit I'm kidding, I just made that last part out. But in 1989, the police were called to the house. Apparently, OJ was being too aggressive with it. You know, she was like, woman rights. And back in the day, there were white tank top uh, wife beaters. They were probably arguing about something and OJ raised his hand on his wife a lot. And that was a time where they went to court, but he was found not guilty. He, has, he pleaded no context to the charges and was sentenced to a probation. It was like nothing, basically. Unlike every happy relationship, it comes to an end. I'm being so negative on relationship because I'm single. Nicole Brown decided to file for divorce and they got divorced in 1992. But on the night of June 12, 1994, I don't know why I made it dramatic. That was the trial of the century where Nicole Brown and a friend were found in the driveway of Nicole's house. Basically performed some very disturbing things on them. You know, like they were uh, stabbed many times, like in all places. They were, they were almost like the head was almost off with the amount of stabbings that uh, 
happen. It was a horrific scene. I've seen some of the photos in the documentary that I watched, but for obvious reasons, I cannot show you. What happened that night in June 12? Okay, I'm not going to make it more dramatic. Nicole Brown wasn't 18 anymore. In 1994, she was 35 years old. A 25-year-old man decided to bring, at the middle of the night, to bring uh, glasses of Nicole's mother. It was like, oh, you forgot this at the restaurant because they were dining early, er, earlier, apparently. It was like, here's your glasses in the middle of the night. I'm pretty sure they were. he was just being nice and it wasn't a role play or the stuff. Well, they're dead. Let's not talk about that. But basically, all I'm going to say is Nicole liked them young and just, you know, rest her, rest her soul, rest her peace. <laughs> and basically, what happened was OJ was not the type of... You know, as long as she is happy, I am. I will divorce you because I want you to be happy. OJ was like, fuck that. Even if I love you, if you do not love me, you are never allowed to be happy ever again. Toxic relationship. I absolutely love that behavior. After two years of their divorce, he was still in contact with her, trying to call her, trying to win her back, apparently, from the phone calls because Nicole, I think a week or two weeks before she got unalived, she called her friend saying that I am scared that he's going to unalive me. Maybe he was like, if you don't love me, I will unalive you. Which is obviously a very terrifying thing, especially if you go like in a relationship with a psycho. After the incident happened, they just left them on the driveway. The police found the... Uh found them all on the ground with a lot of blood everywhere and obviously the first person they go to is the ex-husband with their history of violence they went to him but he was not there that was the night where he flied to chicago he left the los angeles and then the next day he came back um, i think most probably he went to sit with his lawyer or someone and talk and say what a stupid thing I did and, you know, get their story straight and decide how they're going to go forward with it. Five days after the murder on June 17th, 1994, the prosecutor has ordered Simpson to come into trial to be arrested and to go in a long trial to see how he will plead. And that was the day where apparently it was a big, one of the biggest car chases in the world. A lot of people were on the street. They were chanting, go OJ, go OJ. And around like 95 million people were watching this and supporting this while OJ was his Bronco refuses to give in with the police. And I'm sure a lot of people talked about the situation. If you know, the, if you know enough about the case where he was in a slow car chase, going uh, for two hours after he gave himself up and he had a gun on his hand as well where he stopped where he threatened to unalive himself i'm guessing he just missed her and he just regret the act that that he did anyways he got into custody he went into court and that is where the i think nine month long trial started i'm gonna keep it very short in the trial what happened basically they found a glove of oj with the victim's blood on it okay and they found oj's sock in his other home with another victim blood on it they didn't find the murder weapon but these two dna tests came back everything was matching to each other but how did he get away with it how did he get away with these hardcore evidence there was a corrupted cop in the court as well where he was handling the case. I think he was at the crime scene as well. He had a history of being very racist. So what did the OJ's lawyer do? They were like, this is planted. The DNA, the sock, the glove are all planted because this guy is corrupted already and he's racist and he wants to put OJ in prison because he's black. And back then, they were not really believing DNA so much. It was very new, I'm assuming, back then and not a lot of people trusted it. So they decided to believe oj because of his fame because of his um reputation that he didn't do it and he was you know the first black man to go on uh, uh, advertising television to be this successful after nine months he was pleaded not guilty but then after a little while the 25 year old guys his name was ron something he, the guy's parents came forward and decided to sue him and they won this the lawsuit and basically, OJ had to pay them $33.5 million to their guy's family. But OJ did not pay that as well. Now, I'm assuming with all this reputation, not a lot of brands, you're not brand safe anymore. Not a lot of 
brands want to work with you and he was obviously like not in his prime time his football time was over he was retired and he was slowly running out of money he was holding the money that he has he definitely did not have 33 million dollars to pay to these uh, to the guy's family so what they decided to do in the night in the september 2007 he decided to go on an armed robbery attempted armed robbery in that case because they failed and they all got sentenced to 30 years in prison and when they asked him he was like i'm stealing something that already belongs to me in the court he said he just wanted his stuff back but anyways he instead of serving 30 years he only served nine he came out in 2016 and he's been living like low-key maybe he did a little bit of thing or documentaries here and there and two months ago media came out and said oh oj is uh is battling is diagnosed with prostate cancer and he's been in hospital pies care basically he's going under chemotherapy and oj came and denied the fact that he is going through chemotherapy but he didn't he didn't deny the fact that there's something wrong with him you know he's diagnosed with something so after two months of this i think he was just basically he was done he was done he went through a lot in life he had a good name then he had a bad name then he had a good name again he had a bad name and just yesterday the kids came out and they said that uh, he passed away in his bed while being loved by his grandchildren or parents all around them i don't know how the the nicole brown's children because he had two with this wife and he had two with the first wife that he had i don't know how they re reacted did they believe it or not what kind of manipulation game oj put on the kids but even if they didn't have a good relationship i guess the kids just came for the last day goodbye because he was gonna die and he was announced dead just today that he died yesterday it was definitely very interesting and crazy seeing uh, reading about this case and seeing the documentaries and how he got away with all these murders and i just wanted to share some of it with your lazy asses now if you're still eating your food isn't finished yet maybe you need to check on yourself and eat a little bit faster you're eating too slow it's too slow there's no breaks between food you eat you swallow but anyways if you're still eating there's more videos over here take care of yourself i'll see you at the next one